G'day, how you going? Ian Apolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Today we're going to do a beautiful rock water landscape scene with a slight bit of a sunset hanging down in the background there. Something like a beginner can achieve, okay? Watch the video a few times and um, see what you need to do. Now, I'm going to bring you over here and show you what I'm doing, but before I do, I'll, I'll do that as well. I'll show that on camera. I thought I cracked my glass, but I didn't. So um, I'll bring you over here and show you what I've drawn on the canvas here. And the sizes of the canvas will be in the description below if you're watching the replay. So will the list of the colors that I'm using. Okay, I got the headland here. Gonna be a slight sunset there. It's quite a high headland and it's water coming down, but there's a few big rocks in here. Okay, now, I need to paint the sky, so do forgive me. I won't be able to answer any questions if you throw any there, but if I see anything throughout the video, I'll try my best to answer people. But this is a tutorial, okay? So join me Friday night live, 8 p.m. Perth time for my Q&A. That's where we all connect and have fun together for an hour and ask questions and answer them. All right, I'm getting all this on my brush just so I can paint in the sky area up here. So I'll get this just to the headland out there. This is gonna allow my sky to blend really beautiful, like some, there's my headland there a bit. Uh, what do you call it? Like some um, oil paints, like the oil artists get out of their paints. So we've got that craft paint, that's just craft paint and retarder mixed together and I've brushed it onto the canvas. Now I'll just stroke it left and right, get it nice and an even coat on there. There we go. And I just want the slightest, down here, the slightest bit of a sunset happening, okay? Because this is gonna have a lot of facets and subjects in it, this painting, and it's gonna be great for a beginner. I'm just gonna grab the Indian yellow, um, some Indian yellow, uh, a little bit of permanent alinsarin. Just look how much I put there, very little, didn't I? And um, like I said, the colors will be in the description below when you're watching the replay. Got a bit of blue there, and I also need a little bit of gray. Because I'm filming, I have grey in a tube already mixed up, but you can mix grey, black and white to the flavour you want. Okay, but this is just a mid-tone grey that I've got here. Okay, so we want a little bit, I want to get a little bit, let's grab this colour here, the Indian yellow, but I want the littlest bit of this in there to give it the, the orange that I'm looking for for the sunset, okay? I think that might be it. Maybe just a little bit more. See how much I'm putting in there? Bugger all, mate. Bugger all. But it's very powerful. Look at that. There we go. All right, so I want to get the slightest sunset here. Look at this. All the way down there. Now, there's my horizon line. See out here? Everything, in my opinion, from this point on, any lines and length and rocks and whatnot, they've got to be in cahoots with the horizon line. What does cahoots mean? Well, the horizon line is on this angle here, and so are these strokes that I'm putting here. They're not going to come down like this in the sky, okay? And I'll just fade that out to there. Now, like I said, it's just the, the hint of a sunset there. There we go. And see those strokes? There's the horizon line on this level. It's not like that, it's there, and so are they. Now I need to clean this. Now I've got the gray and the white down here. The rest is a very, let's grab this blue and gray. I love mixing the blue and the cerulean gray. No, you idiot. I love mixing the gray and the cerulean blue. I need a bit more gray though, it's not enough. Keys, good day, Keys. Keys, Bregen. 
Lois, how are you going, Lois? Now it's grey, but it's got a hint of that blue in there, okay? Now let's hope the sky is going to be great for me. Now I want the grey in the sky. I want to blend that into that sunset area. So I'm using the tip of the brush now and I'm blending it, blending it. There we go. Now I'll bring the rest of that grey up. It's got blue in it, cerulean blue, but it's an evening sky. I'm going to blend that now, blend it, blend it, blend it. Okay. What I'm going to do is just get a bit more grey in that paint down here on the palette because there we go. It's got to be a lot greyer than what it is. It's still got some blue in there though. Okay, we'll get all this colour in the sky. Get it all in there. Push it left and right. See how that white craft paint allows this paint to flow across the canvas as if I saw it on painting with oils. It's unbelievable how that works. So good. Okay, crisscross that. Pushing it all in there, everywhere I want it. And then I'll stroke it left and right, like a gentleman. There we go. How are we going? Uh, what am I what am I doing next? So I've got that just let me get this down to that sunset a bit. Just make sure that's all working good there. That's it. Now we need some clouds. Uh, we're gonna have some quite strong clouds in here. Uh, I'll sit that brush. No, I've got to wash that brush again, sorry. Uh, because I need it for the lower half later on. So bear with me a moment. So I'll just give this putter on a brush another clean and give it a severe flogging. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to grab my fan brush, my big fan brush. It's a hog bristle fan brush. And I want that, um, where are we? I'm going to mix it with this brush and these are going to be the clouds. So there's me a little bit of this because we've got some sun in there. So just a little bit of that permanent alindrin, okay? It's going to make some kind of purple into that grey. And then just grab the rest of that blue and mix your grey into it, okay? Get a dark grey going on. Yeah, now we can probably get a little bit more of that. There we go. Mix it to your happy, a bit more of that. There we go. And you'll see the colour we're getting. These are just those band of clouds in the evening sky. That'll do it. And they can have some bits of, um, uh, what do you call it? Now we're going, uh, what do you call it? Yumminess in them later on. There's the headland out there. This is, I need turmoil within this. So what I'm doing, I'm putting it on. And there's going to be all sorts of turmoil within this cloud. Can your camera see that? Yes, it can. Okay, so we're, what I've done, I'll just explain to you what I've done. That is the body of cloud, but I've deliberately left this colour popping through saying, G'day, here you go. Uh, and you know why? So when I add the turmoil, it's going to be all that busy bullshit in a cloud going on that just gives you that, whoa, I love that cloud look. So I'm going to grab yourself a blending brush and a cloth to wipe it as you go. Now I'm going to first manufacture the bottom area of that cloud there. Give it a bit of a bum. Oh, look at that. Nice in, in cahoots with the horizon line. Wipe your brush. A little bit crooked there, but we'll fix that up. In cahoots with the horizon line. Look at that. Now, this is going to get 
bits of blur, smear, turmoil, all within that cloud body there. And when we add the white yumminess, it's going to create, like I said, the yumminess. Now you can see what sort of clouds happening here. I'll get that white top. I want the top reasonably flat, but not too mechanically flat, if you know what I mean. So I'll mix him up a bit more there. Now see the turmoil, how I've got this colour still poking through. Wipe that brush really well. Get this turmoil uh, mixed all across the sky, leaving bits of the sky colour there. Now the top bit, I'm going to go in cahoots with the horizon line and flick it this way, just so as I can tame the top of that the way I want it to look. Okay, and same down the bottom. There we go. I've got to get that reasonably level there. That'll do. I'm going to put some yumminess there so that'll help. Beautiful stuff. Nice simple sky this one. Uh, it's not finished yet. Now we're going to grab some more of that paint. I'm just using that fan brush. Uh, we'll put some little gap fillers in here, like so. And maybe one there. Look at that. Boom. Put that down. Lightly, lightly smear them into that sky colour. Just touch it so you can see what's happening. And there we go. Look at that. Same with this one here. You're pushing it. You're making it milky and silky and kind of like smoke as well. There we go. And then we're going to put the main big one at the top. This is what's really going to frame the painting. Where's the top? There we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start from the bottom here where I want the, the bottom of this big cloud at the top, all the way along here, in cahoots with the horizon line, up there. Now I'm getting this brush and making my gaps, parts of the sky colour peeking through, going, g'day, how you going? Practice this, it's a lot of fun. This is acrylic paint, and it's amazing what clouds you can get out of acrylic when you do a, a lot of practicing. Now, everything is this way in cahoots with the horizon line. So, dribble that, get these lines nicely teased into there, bleeding into that sky color. Yes, now add turmoil and blend that, the main body of the cloud. Look at all that turmoil up there. Look at it all on the brush too. That's why it's important to keep wiping it. And you've got darker values and lighter values of the cloud colour on your sky. It's looking great. It makes you go, hey, I like that, I like it. I've got to calm down. Sometimes I get excited, you know. But it's a good thing. All right, so that's it, pretty much the clouds. Now, we're going to add the yumminess to make them pop. Oh, where's another appropriate fan brush? That'll do. And some titanium white out the tube. Thank you very much, Keys. Breejan sent a super chat donation there. Much appreciated. If you're watching the replay and want to send in some support, there's a... PayPal donate link there for you people watching the replay that like to give support that way. Now, we've got titanium white. I've got a clean fan brush. We don't want too much white in this because look at those colours there. Let's just see how it's going to look first. I'm, I'm scooting along because things have got to get done. But here's the bottom. So I want to put this on, this colour. See how I'm doing it? I'm not going up here, down there. I'm in cahoots with the horizon line. I'm going to grab a different blending brush because that one I was using is contaminated with all that other colour. And I want to sit that down, that yumminess, but still leave the vibrancy of it there. I hope I'm not talking too loud. And this is adding bullshit yumminess to those clouds. 
work out how to move your brush which way left right up and down but it's generally in cahoots with the horizon line and how's that looking is it looking all right uh, same with that top one now we want to bring some white yumminess look at that I'm just you can see what I'm doing from the from the sky here and I'm scalloping it upwards in a fan shape like that boom and I'll gently sit that down within that color as well it's just a different type of cloud formation can't keep doing the same cloud every now and then you've got to up your ante what you're painting don't you eh? just remember all my paintings are for sale um, message me on Facebook if you want to purchase one of my YouTube paintings and um, the links below what's available my Facebook page even my art group page on my Facebook the Annapolis Art Network all my videos that are available in my YouTube channel there we go there's our sky now what I might do because I want to feel a little bit arty what's that 20 minutes for the sky goodness me I might just get some white so I'm, I've just cleaned that brush and probably let's just see what some white here is going to look like as well I might not do it but I've done it just to see what it's going to look like because that grey I feel is a little bit loud but it'll be all right. I won't worry about it if I wasn't filming I'd muck around for ages all right there's a sky reasonably reasonably reasonable I can take that tape off a reasonable sky now see it was such a little sauce but it gave a lot of spaghetti look at that that little sunset down there now we need to just get rid of that hard edge there with my finger there and maybe here because I would like to just dry that edge now so when I put the rest in it'll won't be hindered not everyone has black matte black I'm going to do it with probably colors that people might have is that carbon black yes it is it's carbon black so I'm going to have some carbon black and forest green mixed together so it's pretty much green but blackulated green all right it's blackulated um, I'm grabbing my big filbert brush love this brush uh, I'm going to put some water there like that I need to get these brushes in the tub so they won't go hard and rotten now there's me green okay I'm put, pushing it into the water there and now I'm going to start incorporating that black mainly black but let's get this it's got some green in it because we just want to block that in now so as we can make our big headland there okay I'm just mapping this in shy from the top there okay there's the horizon line there now I want to grab this and then start bringing it to where I want because we're going to have some air in between here as well okay look at the different colors it's going to start changing we've got some air all in between there dark air see the it's not really going too well but let's try it again let's get here some air in between there there we go get that air in there come on there we go some air in between there see what I mean the air in between there join that back in there this is all going to be covered with green bit of an idiot leaving the camera off when I started this bit but once you watch the replay that'll be edited out you won't even know that happened now if you're one of the lucky ones here in the actual live feed when I finish the actual painting I always leave the camera going for some extra little bit hanging over that 
the sunset there. Down there. And just coming off this side here. Oh, just dribble in front of that, oh, in front of that sunset like that. Oh yeah, look at that. Done, 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 done. All done. Okay, I'm just gonna stroke out any heavy bits now. Get this about there. Let's hope it's still pliable. It's the sky color. I want more grey. Now I'm just going to map in my water where I roughly want it with this. So I've got a flat brush and I'm coming in cahoots with the horizon line. I'll just get up under there somewhere like that. Some of this is all going to be covered up, but I'm putting it there anyway. So it's already there. All the way up there. I'll just go there, bugger it. Now watch all my videos all the way through if you want to paint with them, just so as you know what I've done. And if I've made any mistakes, you'll know not to make the same mistakes, okay? Picking this up, get it all scratched on there. I want this in there so as um, I don't have to try and mess around with it in between. When I put the rocks and that in there, I can just put them on and then go for it. So this is just that cerulean blue. I better get my hand off the camera. And that grey mixed to this value. Just like that for now. Because, get that there, there we go. Now there are some darker areas of blue where those other rocks were which is about here i better get the cerulean blue there it is i've got it it's okay i'm just mixing it and get some of that around here roughly where those rocks were wipe that off the brush and then pull it through the water there we go and i'm getting some of the white this is just finishing the water here. A lot of white on that brush. There's some, those rocks are there. So this white's pretty much here. I'll fix this up later. I'm just getting it there for now. I want to finish those trees that I've that headland that I've put out there. So I want some lighter colour out here. I'm just going to grab some more titanium white because it's too much mixed with the blue. Some out here. There we go. Just get a lighter value there. Make it watery. There we go. That's it for now. That can dry and tack up while I do the other section. Now, my filbert brush, did I wash that? Yes, I did. I'm going to use the same brush. Now, I'm grabbing the um, forest green. <sighs> Ian is a pleasure to watch. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, has very talented, he's a very talented artist. He's a very excellent teacher, says Oswina. I think she means teacher. We all know what she means. How you going, Oswina? Oswina? <laughs> I hear a lot of people call you Goswina. Anyway, they know, you know what they mean, don't you? Now, I've got the forest green here, and I want to... I'm just going to get it, I'm wetting it a bit, getting it to the right inky consistency. Don't want it too blobby. See that headland we've got out there? We want to start slightly greening that up, but there are some taller bits. So can the camera see this? Yes. 
there's some taller bits right here. Now I'm just looking at my sky because my sky is very wet. Okay, so I might have to give it a bit of a run over with the, I will, with the um, hair dryer. Okay, now back to there. Now I've just put the littlest bit of black in that because see how that green, it's looking very cartoony. I want a bit of, look what the dark does with it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to jostle along and just put some of the tall aspects above here because the reference picture has these and they look really good, these bits above the actual canopy there. So I'm going to put them in as well. We've got some really high up here like they look like Australian gum trees I feel. They might not be but I'm going to Call them Australian gum trees. Got some all the way over here. Real straggly up there. And maybe something just poking up there all the way up. Now we're going to use the um, forest green on its own now. I'm just wiping that, I'm not washing it. Picking up the forest green and we want to, all this green dark area, find those tops that you've done. Is that still, I've got to get that paint a little bit wet down here, that forest green, this is just straight forest green, neat out of the tube. And those blacks go on top of the blacks and do these kind of half moon shapes all over there, all over here. Now, you can't really see justice in these brush strokes at the moment, but later on what we do is going to really bring them home. Okay, so bear with it. I'm going to the tops, finding the tops here. These are so easy to do, plus they are also very effective looking to do. They, when they're finished in the painting, they look very effective. Come all the way down here. I'll stop about there for now. I'll do that other bit later. And we've got a lot of darks within here as well. So now I'm making all these um, sad mouth faces with this filbert flat coming all the way down my canopy of trees here. It's a big headland. It's going to be dark left at the bottom. Leave dark left at the bottom here like that, okay? The camera's picking up some of that. It's not too bad for the light's sake. All the way over here. Bring some down there like that. How's everyone's day been? Pretty good, huh? I had a good day today. I had a day off and I realized I could have done some pressure cleaning on the roof today because it was such a sunny day and it'll save me doing it tomorrow. So I went out on the roof today and connected my pressure cleaner up and pressure cleaned the moss off the tiles and out of the gutters, ready to repoint the ridge caps tomorrow. Okay, there we go. Now you can't see that very well, which is fine. It's okay. Um, down the bottom here, I'm just gonna pick up some of the black on there while I've still got it on this brush. Cause see the bottom of this headland I don't want it flat like that. I want some dimension. So there's going to be big rock there. So just this bit here, I want to kind of bring a shoreline out here. Okay, just like that. All the way off the painting. Something there. Make your brush flat again, Ian. It should have been that flat that I used before which I will use because that is very hard. Where did I put that flat brush? Um, there it is. Just bear with me a minute. I'm just wiping all that watercolour off it. Give it a bit of a dab there. And it's going to be burnt umber anyway, so I might as well put some on the palette there. I'm picking up some burnt umber on that flat brush that I use for the water there. And I'll get all this 
burn um but in there like so just along there just so as the bottom isn't so flat with no dimension coming around there like that there we go in cahoots with the horizon line there we go I've scratched a little bit of white in there just to give some lighter values in this area here. It's going to be dried anyway. I'm just putting this there now. In cahoots with the horizon line, remember? There we go. That's just the shore. Way out in the distance there. Put that back in the water. Yeah, that's done what I want it to do because I want the um, the green here to kind of come down, leaving some darks under there. All right, that's done there. Now I've got to wash this brush, so I'm washing it. Now the next colour, I've still got me um, forest green, but now I'm just going to slightly incorporate some cadmium yellow. Just cadmium yellow medium. Okay, so we'll put a pile of that there for now, because we want some yellow greens later on as well. I'm just going to get some more on my palette. I'll bring you down in a minute. So let's start getting some cad yellow into this forest green. Now this colour here, like I've done in other paintings, you've seen me do. Now let's quickly dry that. Just want to dry that green we put on there first. Okay. Now let's get this. Don't want it too loud for now. Just enough to stand out in front of that. Now I've got to wet the brush a little bit more just so as we get that inky consistency. Now it's important when you do tree foliage and canopies of lots of tree mass and stuff, you got all those darks in there. If those darks are not there, it just doesn't quite look right. Now I'm going to see how this is going and just on the tops bring some of this down. Leaving the blacks there. This is the actual colour. That forest green I first put on there is acting like the base. So we've made layers of it. I'll get all here done first. See, I like to leave pockets of blacks there. Now this one you want to try and shape those brush strokes so they don't look too blobby. I do have another fill, but I might have to use that. We'll see how we go. But I'm going to try and lace this in a way that it kind of looks foliage-like. How's that looking in the camera? That's okay for now. I don't want it to be too bright. Now we'll come across there like that. All along here like that. kind of give it some sort of drop there and then we'll get some other ones down here okay in front lower and all sorts coming down but leaving the darkness at the bottom here because when we add some trunks and stuff it's going to make it go oh well I like that I like what happened there it's a it's a procedure that happened before your eyes and that procedure cost you nothing to watch happen <laughs> There <laughs> we go, look at that, all the way along here. Can you see what I'm doing? If you can't, bear with it for a minute, and you will once I add the little sticks in there. I'm making different layers of the forest here. Get some of this up here now. Just there. A 
going to be rocks covering that bit there. Got all my heater on. I might have to turn it off soon, depending how hot it's getting. That's looking okay. Right, you can see what's happening, hopefully. Let me just fix that up. Now, how's those top buggers going? They need a little bit of highlight in them. Maybe something, not too much, just little bits here and there, just to make them look part of the gang. Go, how's that? Yes, yes, yes. This here. Okay, done. <clears throat> now I've got to dry that green. Now we've got that same brush. And now we're going to start adding some more yellow into that green. This is the final tint, the final layer. Let's get that to the right consistency. Let me, I'm just check it up here, see what it's like. Oh, it needs a bit more yellow. Beautiful paints, these ateliers, I tell you. Now, just very little, not big blobs like that, okay? Very little. This is the light. If there, if anything is there, just hitting all this stuff. How's that looking? That's okay, Ian. Get some up here. Very little. Just twine your way down through the canopy. It doesn't have to be over all of it. Look, I'm going to bring some all the way here. Leave big pet shadows in there. Sometimes tall stuff above will leave shadows within it. So I'm going to leave a dark pocket, let that cast some kind of shadow if that's the way it's happening there. It's very, very minimal. Okay. Now let's get back to this bit here. The very edge here, where it's heading there, I want oh, dribbling over the blacks there. This is what's making the shape. Bits of lighter scooting on the high bits there. Now you can see what I've done. I didn't go and put every colour all over it and stamp it like on screen printing, okay? You've got to use your imagination, think, and if you're not sure how to do it, do it. And when you finish your painting, you can look at it and think, well, I did good or no, I need to, I can see where I need to enhance my behavior. See what's happening there? I did go a bit bright there just by hitting it so I can easily darken that back when I, if I want to put the darker color back there. Over the, it's important to get some into the darks there as well, dribbling over the darks. Now we'll get this bit here done. All the way in front there. Over the darks, there we go. You can even probably put some of this in the dark, make it look like some light hit it there, see? Okay, now we'll put the, um, grab yourself a liner and we want pretty much, um, where are we? We'll grab some of the um, titanium white next to the burn umber there, okay? Because we pretty much want, and get your brush wet, you want this pretty much ghostly white like so and you want your brush wet enough so they don't break going up your canvas you want these nice wet and sharp looking and very fine okay and we just want some trunks oh, is the camera up there no get the camera up there you idiot there we go ok 
Okay, nice and sharp, nice and sharp. See, they're not quite, it's not quite wet enough. See how that's breaking? So I'm gonna wet the brush a bit more. Okay, and we just want the most finest, but realistic, wiggly looking trunks you can probably put on stuff in here, okay? I'll get something out there. There we go, I'll fix that one up if I can. Just like that. And these are what's gonna make all this. Look good down in here, in this dark area, you know? They're just gonna add that wow factor. Don't want to go too much, but this I feel I might have to do some of this off camera because to get it looking really great for the painting's sake. There's bits up there. I'll put these in, but they're going to be black, these ones. So I'll just get them there so I know where they go. No, I don't have to get them there, they can wait. I'm getting some along here. Really sharp, look at that. All up in there. Bits of trunks being hit by the light. Okay. Ooh, let me just turn this heater off. I'm cooking now. There we go. Okay, where else do we need some of these? That's pretty much it. I might put something about here because this is going to be open. So you get the finest you get them. I think that'll do it. Okay. Now, where's me filbert? Grabbing this brush again, because that, those branches that I just put on. Oh, before I do, bear with me a moment. The colour we used here, the blacky green, that dark colour, get that onto your brush, mainly the black colour of it. Make sure it's very reasonably inky. And those branches, Let's join them to the below canopy. Get stuff in there like that. And then bring these down. Is that dark enough? Yeah, it's not much. That's not quite inky enough. <clears throat> Get these dark ones in there. I don't know why I was going to do them that white colour before. I didn't need to. They're joined up to the ground there. Now, like I was doing this yellow, I'm just grabbing a little bit more yellow now onto there, see? A little bit more yellow. Bit more yellow, bit more yellow. Just on one side of the brush. Very little. Where I just put those, I wanna kind of sink them back.
Oh, he went a bit hard there. Hit that a bit heavy. I can. I will have to get some of the um, darker colour and sit that back down. But I'm just putting tiny traces of some brighter areas, giving me the opportunity to sink those trunks back. There we go, we can keep mucking with that till the cows come home. I want to get a bit of dark. Just so you can, where did I do that heavy bit? Come on. There we go. That'll do. Hmm. I've got to, I'll fix it now because I'm not happy with that. So let me fix that. Sort of mending that back. I don't like what happened there. That'll do. That'll be all right. I'll fix it up. I have to do it off camera now because it's wet. I've got that dark back in there. There we go. Did that help? Let's have a look in the. In the monitor there. Yeah, that'll do it. That will do it. That's anyway. That's pretty much what I want out there. Okay. Now I've got to dry that because we're going to put a little bit of mist out here just so we could behind the rocks. Okay, I'm going to find my little scrumbling brush and I need some titanium white. Has it got water in it? I hope not. Okay, where are you all? Now I'm going to, now I've dried that, I want to put some mist just in front of this area here. So I've got a very dry little scrumbling brush, just something I can create some mist with. Okay, and it's important that your canvas is dry for this and this paint has got no water in it. Yeah. So I'll start down here where it's gonna have, mainly in front of all this, very lightly in front of all that. So that dark will peek through, there we go. Try and get it like, rocks will be down to there. But this is just gonna be the mist. Coming up to about maybe, oh, that's about there, maybe about here. So. Getting this just above there misting all this up and once we put the hard sharp focus rocks in front of this it'll look all right so this is an easy way to do some mist all the way up there oh we don't want any of those bright blobs there in front of that sunset a little bit but not too much you don't want to kill your sunset Have a look how that's looking. That's looking okay. I want this to look spilled up coming up the valley there a bit there. That's it like that. It's going to be rocks there. That's it, looks like mist to me. Yeah, it looks like mist to me. Uh, now, I'm gonna use my filbert. Where's my filbert? And I've got some burnt umber and black. So we've got burnt umber and black. Uh, where are we? We'll grab some black over here. And we'll mix in with some of this burnt umber. Wet the brush. Now this is mainly black with a bit of burn umber mixed in it. Now the, it's important to get the bottom of these rocks that we're gonna put on in cahoots with the horizon line as well. If you don't, your painting sort of doesn't look right. No, you missed it. <laughs> all right, I've put all this, lucky I looked up at the thing, I've put all these rocks 
in front of that mist. I've done a section there, keeping the bottoms in cahoot with the horizon line. Nice palette, yeah. All right. Get these. Get the bottom done nice and sharp. <laughs> you must have been screaming at me, eh? Sorry about that. That happens, though, with live. It really does. Okay. Now, I just want smaller ones here. Now, tracing into the... Um, see this... Um, shore line we put there? Well, see, it's not wet enough. See how it breaks up? That's telling you to wet it a bit more. What's telling me to wet it a bit more? Put one there. Maybe one here. Just little subjects. The bottom of them's got to be flat. There we go. Done that, now we're going to do the main one in the front here, which pretty much comes up from about here. Where's my camera on there? Yes, it is. Uh, it's going to come up there and all the way up here in that bay and then come up off the camera, or not off the camera, off the canvas, off the camera. Now I'll quickly um, scratch all this in like a rock. I shouldn't really punish this little fill because it was an expensive brush and the other one I bought just a bit bigger than this he didn't quite last as long as I would have liked him to and yet you go and buy a real cheap brush and they last forever okay let's get this out there like that there we go we've got one layer there it's got all the darks in there now you've got to dry this before we put the other slight highlights on it, okay? Okay. Just out here, I want to make the um, Inga Hoots with the horizon line. I want some darkness. You know how seaweed gathers? And the water's going to be there. And also I'm going to try and get a bit of a reflection in the wet sand here. Once I put the white froth there, that'll make sense with all of that, but I'm just trying to get a bit of reflection in the sand there. Okay, that's it there. We, we might get a bit of dark stuff out here, something for the whitewash to sit against, and maybe just a slight dark area out here somewhere as well. Okay, I can wash that brush now. <laughs> now we've got to dry this so as we can put the next colours on and we're nearly finished. Okay, now we're going to grab that same brush, where is it? Okay, give it a wash, give it a dry, grab the, where is it up here? I'm grabbing the black. Now I've got to remove, I've got to move that camera, move that camera, just remember to move that camera. I just want some black on this brush, nothing else because I want to get the darks there and then just slightly highlight those rocks and then that's it before we put water there. So pretty much the bottoms of these rocks now you want, camera move, yeah, highlight the bottoms dark, scratched in. Now these rocks can, I'm going to do them like that, sort of lineal but 
scrumble it into the rock. There we go. Get the bottom there dark. Get bits of that dark right behind that one. There we go. Where'd that black go? Along here, I want the bottom dark. Oh, up here, different areas dark. Just scrumble it so it merges with the brown there. Scrumble it in so it merges with it there. And then when we add the um, highlight, it puts everything back from each other. So we've got a lot of this stuff now here, there, mainly all there. Because over in Australia, the rocks that we have on the coastline and stuff, they're real like sea spongy type shapes and um, real scratchy looking. I don't know how to quite explain it other than they look like lots of round clumped up sea sponge, but in like rocks, you know. Get some of this right up here. Get some of it all scrumped up in here. Look at that, I'm just doing anything here. Once you put the highlights in, it'll pretty much make it itself. So you've got the dark brown, add your Add your darker colour the way you want. Scrumble it in. There we go. It's pretty much like a massive rock rock coast. Has anyone got any names I can call this painting? Get some more out in here. Here we go. That's it. Now that needs a bit of a dry. Okay, now you want to, uh, I'll use that same brush. Well, where are you? For the rocks, maybe. I'll see how we go. Now I want the, um, I'll just grab it first. I want the burnt umber again, and I'm mixing it with a bit of white just to get the value I want, okay? So let's make sure I don't forget to move the camera. Get some more burnt umber down there as well. There we go. Now you don't want it too bright and loud. So let's pull some out and see what value we can get it at. Just something subtle, because subtle is more real, I feel, in some paintings. You go too bright and loud, they start looking cartoony. I'm just going to test it up here. I think that's it. Okay, now we'll just put it on here in the rocks like that and move along. How am I joking? Now I'll move the camera and paint it on there. <laughs> right, so there's not much on my brush. We want to get the rock made up now with this colour. Hopefully. Is that working? Oh, goodness me, I hope so. We'll get the... Um... And with this colour you're putting on, don't fuss too much if you get a big bright area. You can always come back with the darker colour and smudge it out again to a darker value if you feel you've gone too bright again, okay? I just want to see. I want this one in front of that one, so I'm putting it in front like that. Oh, did I touch some water there? This doesn't have to be inky and um, wet. This just has to be enough to scrumble it in to those darker values there. And you, you can look in your, if you're using a camera or squint your eyes and you can sort of see where you might need darker or lighter values again within your rocks. That's what I normally do. I'm looking in there. Yeah, they're all right for what they are. My goodness, I only got them from Kmart, so they didn't cost me that much. Now these ones are a bit closer, so I'm trying to get that whole uh, sea sponge, whole grainy look with this closer one. I probably could have, should have done the ones out there the same way. 
but I'm going to try and get that like that and get this one in front of it so we've got a darker shadow there get some more on your brush here and you've got bugger all paint on your brush and then there's pockets of this stuff everywhere and I'm not really thinking there's no really well, I don't know if there is a secret I wish I knew it but um, I'm just hoping for the best here and if you think my rocks look great well you can do them just as easy as me because um, I don't feel there's any secret to get them looking like a real rock that I know of other artists probably do but um, I'm just hoping for the best here let me look in there that's looking okay it's looking reasonable I'll come down here I'll leave a bit of a dark there so that one can come all the way there up the top there to set that back do another one within it over here within it see scrumble it back scrumble it back over here scrumble it back and then we can do another ridge maybe here somewhere of rock scrumble it back just scrumble it back see you there and you can probably touch up I've just pulled a bit more white into there Let's just see we can if you can see some shapes that you feel you made, just get a brighter value again and sort of kiss it like I'm doing here. Uh, hopefully I've got to look in the monitor and see what it looks like first. Good enough, good enough. I feel just a bit out here somewhere. You can do bits within, see there, I've just done a bit within that. I'll do a bit within that one as well. A bit within that one, bit within. Here we go. That looked like rocks, good enough, eh? Now we're gonna wash that brush. I'll tell you what, we're going longer than we need to, aren't we? Nearly finished, nearly finished. How long have we been going for? 76 minutes. Now I'm picking up some white, just titanium white, getting it on the brush, letting it wear away. Rub it up there, get the bags off, get some more on there. And this bit here, I want some water scrumbling out into the watercolour there. So what I'm doing, the bottom half of it, I'm getting sharp over that brown and then the rest in cahoots with the horizon line see all these lines here just pull that back scrumble it in scrumble it in I've got a line I've got a line here there so I want to do another bit of a wave there. Keep it in the perspective of the painting. And just keep the bottom half tight and sharp and then scrumble the top half into the painting like so. And it's the same with this one down here. Let me get a bit heavier paint on there. There we go, and then scramble this back. Scramble it back. This is a procedure you can practice on its own itself as well, is just making water. Now see everywhere, where we got, oh no, well this isn't quite a rock actually, this is just a darker area within the, in there. Where the water is, get it just kissing against the rocks there as well, like this. Nice and sharp, not too big and fat. Get some water kissing those rocks. Come out a bit.
and probably we've got enough out here. Yeah, little bits in this little cove area here, just get some minute bits in there and just to detail it back there, sink those rocks down in the water there like that. That's quite a frothy bit there. How's that looking? That looks, it's done what I wanted it to do. Hello Ange. There we go. There we go. How's that looking? Now I need some of you to give me a name for this because um, we'll just put the littlest bit of um, Where's the camera? <laughs> Is it there? Bring some of this white up into there, just into that reflection there. Hopefully that looks like wet sand there, but I'll get into that in another video. Yeah, it does. It does. Lisa Carroll. Hi all. Just in time for the froth. Yeah, there we go. All right, I'm going to grab me um, little um, script liner. Where is it? What colour should I use? I should use something quite white, I feel. Whitey brown, that colour there. Get it real inky, Ian. And we'll just put our autograph on it and we'll whack a frame on this and see how it looks. Now, I've had some people asking me what size are my canvases and that. Everything's in the beginning of the paintings in the video or they're in the description below okay where's the tape there it is there so we'll put this autograph here and then check out the links in the description below become a member of my art group post your art there message me on facebook if you want to buy one of my tutorials and the good thing about my tutorials is you can always go back on youtube and watch it being created they are all 80 us dollars includes postage and handling to your address no matter where you live in the world and they come with a print of my first painting that I've ever done and an autograph photograph of me acknowledging you as the purchaser. Now we're going to whack, a f oh here's the reference, let's show you the reference so you get an idea. I found that on Upsplash. You can see what I was achieving there, okay. Okay, let's whack a frame on that and see how she looks. There you go, that's not too shabby, eh? Little bit of a sunset picking booing over there like that. We've got some rocks on the coastal line here and we've got a canopy forest trees all the way there and not a bad looking sky either. And just remember with a bit of practice, if you're just starting out painting, you can do that, okay? All right, and just remember, if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you. I said good on you.